Apple finally updated its peripherals. Let's check out Apple's 2024 Magic Mouse, Magic Keyboard, and Magic Trackpad. Before we dig into all of these, if you want to keep up to date with the latest Apple news, please consider hitting that subscribe button. So all of these new peripherals launched during Apple's blockbuster week of Mac updates. Basically every Mac that Apple sells got touched. We got vivid new iMacs with the M4 chip, a diminutive Mac Mini with the M4 or M4 Pro, and an updated MacBook Pro that adds Thunderbolt 5, a nano texture display option, and your choice of M4, M4 Pro, or M4 Max chipset. If you do want to learn more about all of those latest devices, I've linked one of those videos here and you can find the rest of them up on the channel. But let's get into these new accessories. Here I've got the updated Magic Mouse, Magic Trackpad, and Magic Keyboard. I have chosen the white ones, though they all do come in black. The black really does look slick. Here's my old set in black, uh, between the Magic Mouse, Trackpad, and Keyboard. But it's a $20 premium for the black colorway, so uh, white it is. Starting with the Magic Mouse, Apple finally updated the charging port, which while I may be fairly indifferent about, has been described as Apple's worst designed product. One little touch here that you're gonna notice is that all of these new accessories actually come with the braided USB-C to USB-C cables. So I always like that. These are some pretty nice high quality cables from Apple now these days. Unfortunately, the change to the port was solely the move to USB-C. It's still on the underside of the mouse. To charge it, you have to flip it over like a turtle stuck on its back. I know there has been so much discussion on this, like endless discussion. My take is Apple did this for a reason. It knows how people feel about this port. The only possible reason I can think of here is that Apple doesn't want people using it when it's plugged in, whether that's for aesthetic reasons or because it 100% can damage the internal battery to leave it plugged in perpetually, which also cannot be replaced. Apple has really been focusing on battery health across its product lines, so that could be a contributing factor. Maybe a combination of both of those reasons. Is there a better solution to this? Probably. Well, keeping it civil, tell me your best solutions down below in the comments. If you want a high-level overview on the Magic Mouse, it has a touch-sensitive top surface that you can slide your fingers across to scroll or swipe between pages or photos. Third-party apps can even unlock more capabilities of that top surface. Seriously, better touch tool. There, there's a lot of them, but they're awesome. Magic Trackpad, of course, has similar touch functionality. It's a massive, large glass surface that seems pretty indistinguishable from the last-gen model, other than the updated USB-C port. I love the Magic Trackpad. It's fantastic. I use this all the time. Only grabbing my Magic Mouse if I'm doing something super tedious, like trying to cut an image out in Affinity Photo. Now I know the corner radius here looks like it was adjusted a little bit, but it actually was not. This is an older version of the Magic Trackpad here, so Apple had already reduced that corner radius to make it a little more rounded instead of as sharp. But if you have an older one, that is a difference. But if you have one of the more recent versions that were still lightning, yes, Apple did keep that corner radius the same. Lastly on the docket, we've got the updated Magic Keyboard, which does have a couple little changes here and there to point out. When comparing it to my older Magic Keyboard, you can see the icons have shifted a little bit, like Command, Option, Control. Those have now shifted to like the outside edge versus the inside edge. Then there's the globe key in the corner that has had that little function, the FN designator removed for whatever reason. Curiously, they did keep us on the new MacBook Pro keyboard, so it's just interesting that they like removed it from the new standalone one, but not on the MacBook Pros. I guess just because they didn't change the MacBook Pros all that much? I don't know. There are several versions of the Magic Keyboard to choose from. The flagship version is basically an updated version of this, so it has Touch ID on here as well as the full number pad. That model is available both in black and white, if you get it without Touch ID, but still have the number pad, that is only available in white. Finally, there is Touch ID and non-Touch ID versions of the compact keyboard, like what I have here, without the number pad. These two are also only available in white. If you're wondering about the Touch ID situation, 
it does require you to have an Apple Silicon Mac with a secure enclave. So if you're using an Intel based Mac, you need to get one without the Touch ID built in. You can pick up all of these accessories on their own through Apple or other retailers, but Apple's also bundling them with the new iMac, though they come in fancy color matched versions, like the one I got with my iMac, which came with a matching green keyboard and magic mouse. You can see the aluminum on these is tinted green to match the machine. Another benefit of getting them bundled with the iMacs is you get a color matched USB-C to USB-C cable. So you get a green one with the green machine, a pink one with the pink one, such like that. Finally, Apple did update the Mac Pro. It now comes with the new USB-C accessories in the box and you even get a fancy black USB-C to USB-C cable. I'm gonna drop links for all of these in the description, but I wanna hear from you. Are you upgrading to the new USB-C accessories? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.